Harry Reid keeps calling Sharon Engel extreme in their fight for his seat. Here's this latest ad. From World War II to Iraq and Afghanistan, the VA has meant guaranteed care for those who serve. But now, in another extreme proposal, Sharon Angle says privatize it, end the VA as we know it. When she was asked whether veterans' benefits like prescriptions and doctor visits would be covered if she had her way? No, not if you're working toward a privatized system. End our promise to veterans? Sharon Angle, dangerous ideas that put veterans at risk. Well, Angle was asked about that charge this past Saturday at an event in Reno, Nevada. Here's her response to Reed's charge, followed by what she said about her father and handling the VA back in May. I said that they could do a better job. That's all I said. The VA could do a better job for our veterans. And I believe that. I believe that our veterans fit in that A priority box. We should be supporting our military and their independence. And our veterans. I know he pays over $800 a month in prescription drugs that we can't get through his VA nor through Medicare. They just won't cover those things. And I should, know lots of seniors. Should they cover those things? Uh, uh, no, should, not, should. not if you're working toward a privatized system. Well, well, there we have the problem. The Las Vegas Sun's John Ralston wrote about Angle's denial of something we just heard her say, talking about privatizing it. And he said in his piece, you, John, said, I am beginning to wonder about this seemingly pathological habit Angle has of saying she never said something when it is right there on the tape and so easily retrieved. John Ralston, as I said, joins us right now from Las Vegas. He's the host of Face to Face, which airs on NBC stations out in Nevada. John, tell us about this. Give us the sense of this. Here's a candidate who you confront with the fact of a videotape and what happens. Well, it is amazing, Chris. She seems to be uh, suffering from selective amnesia, or she's like that Guy Pierce character in the movie Memento with no short-term memory. I mean, we have two candidates in this race who say all kinds of strange things, and Harry Reid, who said uh, many inexplicable and goofy things. You confront him, at least he'll try to explain it or spin it or paper it over. Sharon Angle just denies she ever says things that are clearly contradicted by videotape, by audio tape. It's as if she thinks we're living in in a world 300 years ago where you can't find this stuff. <laughs> well, we have everything this time. We have Google and every way to check. And here's Angle with ABC News' Jonathan Carl a few weeks ago, followed by her comments on True News Christian Radio back in April. Listen for the contradiction. Together, let's listen. The comment that you made about entitlement programs violating the First Commandment. Can you elaborate a little bit on what you meant about that? <laughs> I don't think that's what I said. We, we said that they, they turned government into our God. I said that. Uh, no, I didn't say that. And there's in these uh, programs that you mentioned uh, that Obama has going with Reid and Pelosi pushing them forward are all entitlement programs built to make government our God. And and that's really what's happening in this country is a violation of the First Commandment. Well, there she is. There she goes again, as uh, Ronald Reagan once said. There she goes again, clearly denying what's on tape. She said that having a government and putting too much hope in a government is violating the First Commandment about not having strange gods before you. I mean, it's quite a biblical thing to go to a uh, to the mountaintop and find a reason to not like your opponent's political philosophy. Yeah, Chris, and then this deny is, it. Uh, Chris, this is just astonishing because what Jonathan Carl asked her, he directly quoted what she said. And you notice, and she does this a lot, she chuckles, she laughs, as if she's recalling some campaign meeting where her consultants have heard this and said, don't ever say that again, Sharon. And, and instead what she does is she just pretends she never said it. It's a very bizarre reaction. Of course, all of this stuff, as I said in that post you referred to, is so easily retrieved. It's so easy to confront her with it. And there's 
are so many instances of this, and the one I remember the best is the, essentially the day after the primary when she uh, appeared uh, under the withering uh, interviewers of Fox and Friends after she had spent the entire primary saying that Social Security should be phased out. They said to her, you never said that, right? And she came back immediately and said, oh, no, I want to save Social Security, when she essentially had just said uh, that she wanted to get rid of it a few weeks beforehand. Well, well, here she is. Here's Angle again with Carl, the reporter, followed by her back in January with radio host Lars Larson, a fellow conservative. Let's listen to the difference here, which is quite 180. When you said that if things don't turn out the right way in this election, we, people may seek first, uh, Second Amendment remedies. What, what, what did you mean by that? What are Second no, Amendment? I don't think that was well, exactly the way I well, said you, you, you tell me. Forget how you okay, said it. Okay. Me. <laughs> the, we were discussing once again yeah. in a context of the Second Amendment. Uh, we were having a discussion about the Founding Fathers and why they had put the Second Amendment into the Bill of Rights. You know, our Founding Fathers, they put that Second Amendment in there uh, for a good reason. You know, John, uh, uh, what, are, what do her supporters say when they hear these uh, denials of something that's right there in front of them? Well, I don't, I don't think they even want to think about that, Chris, but let, let's not get away from the, fa the fact here that these things that we're talking about, each of those sound bites that you played in and of themselves, forget that she's denying that she said them. Each of those statements are so controversial. Who talks about Second Amendment remedies and evokes Thomas Jefferson to talk about because they passed a health care reform, people are thinking about taking up arms? It's just crazy. And, and so even her supporters, such as Danny Tarkanian, who ran against and is now acting as a surrogate, they're distancing themselves from those kinds of comments, as anybody would. And, and, and as, as, as Mark McKinnon said, re moderate Republicans are running like scalded dogs from that kind of statement. So they want to get off of that completely. They only want to talk about Harry Reid, the economy, Harry Reid, the economy, because they know if the election becomes about some of these statements that Sharon Angle says and then suddenly forgets, she's going to lose. You know, I have to tell you, after all the violence we grew up in this country with, uh, the presidents we've lost over the last century or so, and, you know, starting with Lincoln all the way through to Kennedy and almost Reagan and all the other major political figures who've been assassinated, to talk about basically assassination is what she's talking about. And here she is, in her words, as we showed you in the tape, if this Congress keeps going the way it is, people are really looking toward those Second Amendment remedies, using firepower against elected officials, people who were elected, we should be ready to go gun them down. It's an incredible statement. I don't see how anybody can vote for somebody unless they've, well, denied that they ever said it, maybe take it back. And I go back to my Groucho Marx comment, and I say this to voters, who are you going to believe, her or your lion ears? Anyway, thank you, John Ralston, for joining us with this amazing news about a very strange candidacy. 